Hey friends, I'm super excited to draw some really simple birds on wires with you today with a watercolor wash background. Now, instead of doing one whole picture, I'm actually gonna have three different pictures on the same page. So you're gonna need some masking tape. And as you can see, I have already taped down my borders because I want a nice, clean, white, crisp frame around my artwork. So you need to grab your masking tape. The next thing you're gonna need is a permanent marker. I have an extra fine point Sharpie here. If you don't have a Sharpie of any kind, you could always use a crayon or an oil pastel because when we add watercolors, they'll stay exactly where they are. Those lines won't smudge or disappear. If you use a washable marker, any lines that you make will smudge and smear all around your paper when you add water. So it's got to be a permanent marker, crayon, or oil pastel. Now, you're also going to need your watercolors, a paintbrush, and a cup of water. If you don't have watercolor paints, hop on over to my video on how to make your own liquid watercolor paints using washable markers. All right, all that being said, let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is divide my paper into one, two, three parts. So I'm gonna get a piece of tape. I'm going to pre-stick it, which means I'm gonna stick it to my sweatshirt. Whoosh, take it off. And I'm gonna be guesstimating here, okay? And then you're gonna stick it to your page. Now, the reason I pre-stick it is so that the tape loses some stickiness and I don't have to worry about my page being ripped later on. Now those are relatively similar-ish, I think, right? The middle one's a little bigger, so I can always adjust it if I want. You don't have to, but you can if you want. And if you don't want to separate your image, you just want one big one, Go for it, these are your birdies. Now we really wanna smooth out these pieces of tape. Don't let any air bubbles come in there because the watercolor will slip right in and you don't want that. Because we want these spots to stay nice and crisp and clean. Now it's time for your Sharpie, crayon or oil, pastel, whatever you have. And what I'm gonna do is draw some horizontal lines straight across my paper. I'm gonna have a couple up here. These are our wires. They don't need to be perfect. There's one. I went right over my tape and I did that pretty gently. Let's have another layer here. And see how it's a little thin right there? <clears throat> I'm not gonna go back over that because I don't want it to be too obvious of a line. So I'm just gonna leave it just how it is. Get what I get and I won't get upset. All right, let's do one more down here. And what do we think? Do we like three? Should we add a four? I don't know, I kinda like three. I'm gonna keep it simple, I'm gonna keep it three. And now let's add some birdies. I'm gonna add just the silhouette, which means the outline, all in black of my subject, which is my bird. I'm gonna start with a little circle for a head, a little oval for the body, in and then little fluffy tail feathers just like that maybe there's another one sitting right next door their buds hanging out okay and how about we have one down here facing sideways so what you do is you make your circle and then the sideways bird it's a similar as the top oval, it just kind of ends at a point and your feather will come kind of sideways and then you just add a little beak there. It's very subtle. There you go. What do we think? Do we think he's talking to a friend? He might be. Let's put one right here. Yeah. I'm gonna put one more down here. I'm gonna go ahead and just finish off my birds on every section and they can be the same, they can be different. It's totally up to you. I'll meet back up with you when I finish my birds. 
Alrighty, now that I have finished drawing my birds, I'm ready to do some watercolor. I just wanna make a quick note. I drew a few flying birds in the background just by making little curvy Vs, really small so they look far, far away. Now, I'm gonna do three different times of day. One is gonna be kind of a sunrise. This one's gonna be kind of maybe a dusk or sunset. And this one's gonna be more of a midnight painting. Just a little darker than these two. But I just love experimenting with colors. You can do whatever you want for your colors. Now, I highly recommend you have a paper towel nearby just to tap, tap, tap your brush and to use it to smudge away any color. You can use your paper towel as kind of like a mini eraser when you're doing watercolor sometimes. And I'll show you just how to do that in a little while. So let's get started. Over here, I'm gonna do my sunset. So I'm gonna start really light blue here. And if you don't have a light blue, what you can do is add a little bit of blue to your palette like this. Dip your brush in your water, add a little bit more water, and see how that blue lightened up just like that? That's how you can make your own light blue. I'm gonna add a little bit more there and tap my towel. And here we go. I'm just gonna add a little bit of blue. Now, while this water colors, or while this paint, excuse me, is still wet, watch what I can do with my paper towel. Take it, smudge, smudge, smudge. See how I did that? And I lifted some color away. I love the way that looks. I'm gonna add a little more dark spots to the top. And notice I'm using circle strokes with my brush. Very, very gentle. Ooh, sorry, didn't mean to smack my camera. Here we go. And I'm gonna have this fade into some pink. Now, if you didn't have pink, what could you do? How could we problem solve? You can add white and red together to make a really light shade of pink, just like that. That's kind of lovely, isn't it? There he is. And don't be afraid, you can always go back in up top and add little spots of pink in the blue. That's kind of magical, isn't it? That's why I love watercolors. They're not as thick as other paints and they really blend beautifully together. Add just a touch more pink and if I have too much on my brush, just tap your towel and tap, tap, tap away. Tap, tap, tap away, woo. That's lovely, I like that. Bring this down a little bit. Blend, blend. And of course, if I want to smooch a little away, Easy as that. I'm gonna continue here with a little bit of yellow orange. Now if your watercolor set doesn't come with yellow orange, I bet you could be an awesome sauce problem solver and figure out that you can add yellow to orange to voila, make some yellow orange of your own. And if you wanna lighten up a spot or blend a little bit more, just dip in your water, tap your towel, and blend, blend, blend away. I think you want a little orange up here in this spot. And don't worry about brushing right on, or painting right on to your tape. That's fine, that's what it's there for. To paint on. Mmm, a little darker contrast is lovely. Of course, I'm gonna fade that into a little bit of yellow. But that might be a little too bright for me. So I'm gonna go back, add a touch of my yellow orange again, and I'm just gonna lighten it up with a little bit of water like that. And then of course, maybe a little pink, why not? Let's see what it looks like. Ooh, kind of peachy, isn't it? Oh, I dig it. Awesome sauce. And of course, Use my paper towel. Looks like I'm adding a few little clouds, doesn't it? Pretty, pretty cool. Great. And notice where I add more water, the paint reactivates 
and I can lift it right off the page. I think I am almost done with my morning composition. Right? what do you think? I think so. I think I'm ready for my dusk, my sunset time. And I'm gonna actually start with my yellow orange again, but from the bottom. I'm gonna go up this time. Okay, here we go. And if you want your colors to blend a bit more, just put down a little layer of water, of water, then add your watercolor paint. And again, you can do this. Whoop, I see that tape popping up. I'm gonna put that down. There you go. Now this time I'm gonna use a different shade of blue. How about a little mix? I can always mix my paint, right? So what you can do if you have a palette, or if you don't have a palette rather, use a piece of tin foil, aluminum foil, or wax paper, anything that won't absorb your water, and you can mix colors right on the palette like this. So you take your paint, dip it here, put it here, and voila, you can make some pretty cool colors there. I'm gonna make mine a nice sort of rich blue. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna go from the top down now. So I did my bottom and I'm gonna meet them together in the middle. Bring them down and meet each other to say, what's up colors, let's combine and be gorgeous. these together I'm just gonna add water right in between them because if you add blue right over orange you oftentimes will get a shade of brown which you may or may not want and of course use my towel tap up some I'm thinking these are little clouds here hmm what do we think of that I think it's pretty cool I'm gonna activate this paint again down here to create that same effect. So I added the water. I'm gonna find a clean spot to my towel. I might need another one. And then just lift your paint away. Pretty, pretty, pretty cool. I think so anyway. There we go. Lovely. And just like that, my friends. Easy as pie, right? Maybe, cake, who knows. And that's that. I'm gonna lift a bit more over here and it's time for my midnight section. This one's always quite beautiful. I love this one. I'm gonna start with my magenta down here and it's gonna be a little darker. But of course I'll add some water so I have good blending. There we go. you want to really make it dramatic you could add a touch of black but be careful because a little bit goes a long way see that it really darkens it up I like to add this as a sort of a vignette around the side Oop, be careful got a splash of paint in my sunrise gotta be careful so this is just my sort of outline to give it a little more of a shadowed effect. A little more dramatic, as they say. Mm -hmm. And then of course, my favorite, lift some of this away to create a bit of texture. And I think I'm 
just about done. I don't want too many pools over there. But see that spot where I got the black over there a little bit? I think I can fix that if I add just a touch of blue. It's very dark, but blend it a bit. Yeah. Lovely. Hmm. Tap, tap, tap away. Tap it to blend and smooth it out. There you go. Now, I'm gonna wait for this to dry and then I'll peel away my tape. I will meet back with you when it's all dry. So now that my painting is dried, all I have to do is take off the tape. Now, when you take off tape, I want you to pull along the page, not like up towards your face, because if you pull up, what can happen is sometimes the paper can catch and rip. So you wanna rip alongside your paper's surface. Feel gently. If a little part pops up and rips, just gently stop, start from the other end, and then glue that little piece down later. There we are. Ooh, look at those crispy edges. Oops, see there how the tape came up? Uh, excuse me, the paper kind of ripped. I'm gonna pause here, and I'm gonna start from this edge. This is why we pre-stick the tape. See that, that little piece that's there? Now, because it's on a white spot, I could just rip it off, or take a little glue stick and just glue it down like that, but you don't have to. I mean, here, I'm just gonna take that little piece away um, because it's on a spot here, but if it happened up here in the middle of my painting, that would be such a shame. So all you have to do is take a glue stick and glue it down. That would be just fine. I'm just smoothing that out with the back of my nail. It's a little trick I have. There we go. <laughs> and of course, now make sure you have clean hands when you do this. I don't know if you noticed, I didn't wash my hands in between and I put my finger right there so it smooched that spot. What I can try to do though is take an eraser, gently erase where I smudged my work. That's a risky game, my friends, because you might erase some of your paint, but I took a risk and I'm cool with it. My friends, technically you are totally done with your birds on wires, but if you have a white or silver gel pen, or maybe even a white oil pastel, you could go in and add little stars to your background. Sometimes it takes these a moment to wake up. Wake up, please. Okay, maybe I need a different surface. Let me get a piece of my finger. There you go. Wake it up somehow. Wake up that pen and add little stars. I'm going to add some around this outline that formed naturally. You could even add some constellations. I love the Big Dipper, so I'm going to put the Big Dipper over here. And of course, Cassiopeia is a rock star, so looks kind of like a W. And then you can just add at will. I'm not gonna put a moon in because I don't think the pen will be the best solution for a moon. This, this pen here, I don't think it will be bright enough. But if you want to, go ahead and add. Add whatever you like. Now, if I wanted to put a moon down first, you could use a white crayon or white oil pastel and just draw a circle moon here before you start painting. And wherever you add paint, wherever there's crayon, the paint will bounce right off and say, nope, I'm sliding by you. And your moon will be revealed once you watercolor. I don't know if that's super confusing, but eh. I'm gonna do some really close together stars, little clusters. I know it's really hard to see here, but let's get a little closer. It's very subtle, and in person, these stars shine a little brighter. But um, you can always keep going over them. And that's that. I hope you've had fun drawing these really simple birds on wires. 
And if you're if you're confused about like, oh man, well, I don't know what kind of color the sky should be. Take a step outside when you first wake up or right before dinner. Observe the colors you see and write them down in a little notebook. Sky colors are the most beautiful natural colors there are, or at least some of them. And it's right there outside for free in your sky. So if you can, if you're able, take a step outside, observe what you see, and then create some art. That's your challenge. And I think my friends, I am all set with my stars. And I can't wait to see what you create.